Wonderful, Sumbai. Thank you very much for inviting me today and uh, giving me that nice <clears throat> presentation of my person. So now uh, I would like to talk about VDES and standardization status. And um, I'm personally the CTO and also founder of uh, the company called Sternula. Um, if you want to contact me, you have my email down there. Just a second, yes. Very shortly, the background of VDES. Um, I'm not sure if everybody is aware of that technology. Now, we are not in harmonization of data formats right now. We are into the transport of these digitalized uh, data formats. So how do we get a S100 document from shore to ship and back from ship to shore or between ships? So VDES is one possible solution for that. Um, it's derived from the good old AIS, Automatic Identification System, um, which you know today provides us with the information about position, speed and heading and so on. A lot of more details for every ship around the globe, virtually every ship. So what is VDES then? I, I tend on marketing terms calling VDES for AIS to zero. So it's more or less a kind of um, natural evolution of AIS. It uses a lot of the same technologies, but it adds a lot of extra transfer capabilities. So now this today is just a nine minute slot if we give time for some questions. So I cannot go into all the details, but um, the purpose of VDES is to allow, and not only by satellite is here on the picture, but also terrestrially, to transport public services. So that would be IMO e-navigation services, but it would also allow to uh, transport services that allow for harbor, um, harbor booking and optimization services for route optimization, weather optimization and so on. So it's not only about safety, VDIS can also be used for these more you could call commercial services, but in the end these all contribute that shipping is more efficient and by that also uh, less CO2 polluting. Um, so that far for the motivation why we do it. So what's the solution? Well. The solution in VDES is to connect uh, with satellites, with short coast stations. I need to see if I can move my mouse, yes. Uh, with short coast stations and with other ships through the existing AIS VHF antenna on board of the ship, but exchanging the existing AIS equipment with a new AIS 2.0 equipment. So that is a VDES equipment allowing to exchange ship to ship, ship to shore and ship to shore the one via coastal, the other one via satellite. So now you understand what technology we talk about. Um, I would like to talk about which standards are right now ready and which ones are in evolution. So if you want to participate in that standardization, you here with this presentation have a key on whom to ask where to go and also where to read about this technology. First of all, we needed radio spectrum. This is a radio communication technology, so we need frequencies. And uh, many of you probably know by now that the ITU radio regulations um, in its appendix 18, I should have written that here, in the edition of 2020 allocates spectrum to VDES. So that is a check mark that's done. Um, next one is we need to agree, harmonize on how to use these frequencies in order to generate a harmonized way that all countries of the world can use the technology and all ships of the world can listen to these transmissions or do transmissions in a way so that shore authorities in all countries would be able to understand the protocols that are used by the telecommunication standard and the related document is ITRM 2092-1 so that's a new edition and we have that since February 2022 officially available on ITU's homepage. So that's a check mark. 
Um, well, now you say, oh, but maybe we made some mistakes and we need to clarify something or we need to correct something. It's a very new standard. So yes, this is planned. Um, of course, we need to open up for corrections if we find some mistakes or mostly I think it's potential points that can be explained better. Um, and in ITU, such an update is only possible after two years, so earliest in 2024. And one way to collect inputs to the document is to participate in Ayala Enough, where Working Group 3, the Comms Working Group, that's where I'm chairman, is collecting input uh, currently. So we are collecting input, but of course it's an ITU document, so countries can also contribute input to ITU directly. However, pre-coordination is a good thing because then uh, potential clarifications can be taken outside of ITU, which is much faster and easier process. Well, now we know how to use the radio link. Now we need an equipment standard that is typical, at least in, in maritime radio communication equipment. And IEC is working right now on that one. It's IEC TC80, working group 15, led by Stefan Bober. Uh, there is existing a working draft. Uh, and this is taking care of the three main elements that VDES is adding to AIS, that is ASM, VDE terrestrial and VDE satellite for ship and shore equipment. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to contribute to the industry standard, test standard for VDES, it's ICTC80. You may change, but I'm having a working symbol here because we are still working on it. I see documents have a long delivery time, so my personal expectation is 2425 um, for this document to be in a state where it can be used for uh, equipment tests. Participation, please contact your local TC80 representative. IEC is very strict on that. Then we have a document. Well, let's say we have equipment, we have radio uh, frequencies and so on. So now we need to know actually what can we use it for. <clears throat> and um, there is a very good document that is right now under update and that's Ayala G1117. It's called the VDES overview. I would call it also maybe use cases in parentheses. And uh, we are right now updating all the use cases, very detailed use cases in that document and also explain how these use cases can be achieved by use of VDES. So if you want to contribute to the document, please join Ayala Enough Working Group 3 here in end of September. I think that's the week uh, after next week. And we will all meet in Saint-Germain to work on that document. And it's actually planned to be finished here in October, the work. And then, of course, Council needs to approve it before it's on the homepage. So work in progress, but very close to being ready to explain you all what can we just actually do for you. <clears throat> well, this document has also a very important purpose, and that is to help writing the IMO performance standard. <clears throat> and that um, standard should, yeah, that performance standard and the work of changing SOLAS chapter four and five is scheduled to be, let's say, started in IMO NCSR 10, so that's next year, um, where we all hope that input papers go to NCSR on that topic um, to provide a way for VDES to be a recognized instrument by IMO. <clears throat> okay, this work is obviously ongoing and as far as I'm aware of, Japan is tasked with that, uh, with sharing that work. So when we talk about using VDES, um, we talked about the TC80 working group uh, 15 is working on a test standard, but this group also developed an international VDE, VDE application identifier. And that is like in ASM, uh, it's a part of 1371-5, um, a kind of header information that tells everybody who listens to VDES transmissions what kind of data is inside the binary information. So it's a header and this header is 
is defined now. It needs to be adopted. It needs to be broadly discussed. Um, however, the experts working on the topic have uh, made a good effort on proposing something here. And it can identify all the content. So from now on, you could say we can start sending UTF-8 text messages, for example, over VDES. We have a defined format how to do that. Um, or we can send MCP, Maritime Messaging Transport Protocol messages uh, through VDES and a million different transport formats that you might want to choose. It's like in ASM. Uh, this will be an international process, so every country, every company and so on can propose formats. However, we need to remember um, harmonization is important, so let's try not to use all these millions of possibilities. But in order to be democratic, we also need to have the possibility that every country can propose own formats. So this is defined. It needs to be adopted, of course, as part of a recommendation or as part of a test standard to be discussed at Ayala in two weeks, in fact, as one of the places. Um, and then we need the data formats. How, and how do we transport uh, a S100 document, for example, from shore to a ship in a way so we enable all the trust we know from the maritime connectivity platform and uh, that's a, a very important standard to tell us how to pack such formats in order to transport them over VDES. Um, and in fact, the MCP has a maritime messaging service working group. And this working group, I'm also having the honor to participate there, is working on a protocol that can transport I say it's simple S100 and other digital data over VDE terrestrial satellite and also over IP connections. So roaming between VDES and IP connections, 4G, 5G, whatever you choose to trust on board of the ship um, is under preparation. This is work in progress. We have sent a first draft to RTCM special committee one to one already in June this year and our target is I would say ambitious end of 22 we want to have the whole standard described it's uh, not that complicated so it should be a quite simple protocol that allows us to link the world of S100 and harmonized information exchange and it's not only S100 if we find something else in the future it can also be transported over that it's digital data transport in a fully trusted way uh, with heterogeneous networking over IP networks that could be satellite or terrestrial and over VDES. So if you want to participate there, um, it's the Maritime Connectivity Consortium or Navilink that can give you an entry ticket to that standardization work in progress. All this is shown in a picture here. I don't uh, want to use your time to explain everything once more, but I think it's a nice picture developed in my working group. Here you have it. It's all the kind of input um, information that we use and all the standards that are expected to be an outcome of that. First of all, for VDES specifically in the context of IMO and then specifically for the service architecture where uh, we have uh, the Maritime Connectivity Consortium and the MMS um, integrated. MMS is only one way to use VDES. It's also possible to use VDES directly without the layer of MMS. But then harmonization is a big question, of course. Outlook. So when can we start to use VDES on ship and shore? Well, I'm coming with examples here. There's probably others. Uh, for example, there is the Saab R6 VDES unit available from the 1st of November. You can just go somewhere and buy it. And this unit is a fully approved uh, AIS type approved AIS. So you can mount it on a ship and replace your old AIS with it. But it can also be used for VDES testing according to 2092-1 today. Um, and that enables you to do pilot testing or to transport services that do not require IMO uh, approval of this means of transport. Um, I may say that Estonia bought a complete shore base station for their complete shoreline. So several shore base stations that are VDES 
compatible. So it's happening out there. That's what I want to tell you with this one. So yes, you can buy equipment. Installation is possible. Um, and of course, you can use it for non-safety related services and trials right now. So what do we need um, to do it with the satellite? Well, my company is providing you with VDSAT coverage more or less worldwide for test purposes and um, your first trials. So that's available and we are using an early version of this maritime messaging uh, service protocol to demonstrate that. So then we need to expect IMO to recognize VDIS as an instrument, as I told you, starting in 2023-24. Um, when they are ready, we can only, we cannot know as we sit here. So that's work in progress. And then we will have a test standard ready by 24-25. And after these two things have happened, then we can use VDES also for IMO e-navigation services. So that's for safety related services. Um, finally, if you want to ensure harmonization of VDES equipment up to the point where we have a ready test standard, there is the VDES Alliance, which is finally inaugurated now. And it's possible to join the VDES Alliance from uh, October, so that's next month. And there is the goal to test interoperability of equipment on provisional test pipelines until we have the final test pipeline, of course, and then it would be notified bodies doing that job. And I think that finishes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan.